So if you're sitting on your couch, I think you need to stand up to sing this one with me. It's Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of Righteousness and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Merry Christmas. Isaiah 53, beginning in verse 4, this is what it says. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's sing together, O come all ye faithful. Born this 
Jesus, happy morning, Jesus, to Thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, O oh, come, let us adore Him. Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. It's good to have you join us this morning. I hope that you have have had some fun opening presents and spending time with family. And so since we're not able to meet together this morning, I just want to bring us back to uh, really what is the, the heart of Christmas. And the heart of Christmas is that there's something deeper that we have that can't be touched by anything in this world. One of our uh, favorite movies as a family is The Grinch. The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, and I, I personally like the older one, the one from the 60s, uh, just because of the, the singing and, and everything that's going on in that, uh, in that cartoon, plus it's the original, so it's good. But the thing that strikes me about, about that show is that there's not just a silly cartoon for kids to watch, but there really is a deeper meaning. And the lesson behind that is that there's something deeper than just the presence and the lights and the eating and all the things that we do during this time. There's something deeper that God has done for us. And we see that in the Grinch, that there was a hope that was holding the Who's together, that even though the Grinch stole Christmas, at the end they were together singing and being thankful for what they had. And so as Christians, the deeper part of who we are comes from a gift that we could never have seen coming. There's a worship song that I've enjoyed here recently in the last couple of months, and it starts with, I thought I had you figured out. I thought I knew exactly how you'd move. And then the chorus goes something like, wouldn't it be like you to be different than we want, different than we thought? but better, but better. <laughs> For many of us, we're aware of one thing in our lives. And beyond our, our presence, beyond the things that we have, beyond what we've accomplished, one of the things that always kind of sticks in, my, in our minds is our failures. And I'm speaking from personal experience in this. For whatever reason, the things that replay in my mind the most especially at, right after they happen, are, are arguments or stressful situations that I seem to be trying to figure out how to overcome. It's like my mind is like, okay, hey, let's replay that, Adam, so that way you can learn how to be victorious the next time. And so then I spend hours working on finding the right phrase or response only to wake up to the reality that I can never go back can never go back and undo what I said or undo the decisions that I made. And so it's a feeling of hopelessness and vulnerability, especially when I think about others finding out about how weak or broken I am. And for whatever reason, the brokenness of others seems far less serious than my own. Pretty soon I am struck with another difficult situation where my life before others and my life before God is up to me to get right. I have to figure out how to avoid making mistakes so that others can still find me acceptable and God will still love me and save me and tell me that I am His. And what a horrible place to be where you feel stuck, chained to your past, and weakened by your potential to fail, that you lose sight of anything good 
in your life. At least any good that takes time to develop. Things that taste good or feel good become addictive because it allows you to escape from the pain of your failures and really hopelessness. You ask yourself the question, am I really worth saving? Am I really worth being loved? Am I worth anything? I open this part of my life up to you this morning because I believe this is something that we all struggle with. It's not just me. It's not just Adam Kemper that has these struggles, but I believe this is something that we all do at some point in our life where we wrestle with who we are and the mistakes that we've made. And sometimes Christmas, <laughs> Christmas sometimes brings those things up because we're with family and there's there's some childhood memories that come into play here and there's some other things that have happened in our lives around this time of year that we we seem to relive and we can get stuck and we can lose sight of the good and the hope that we have because we're trying to win things that we could never win we're trying to go back into our past and protect ourselves, right? The little child, the kid, the one that didn't really know how to respond, or the teenager who wasn't sure how to make sense of what was happening in their life, or the young adult who was hurting but wasn't quite sure where to go. The rejection of parents or family members because of decisions we've made, even though we're trying to do the best. All of those things kind of come up, the loss of a family member, the loss of a loved one. And so as we think about that, as I share this a little bit about my own struggles, about my own life, I know that many of us who are watching this also struggle with something. And here's the thing. This is where the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shines the most bright. Just like all of the Christmas lights that we see this time of year, they don't make a lot of sense when the lights are on, but man, when it's dark outside, they're beautiful. And so when we begin to find ourselves in a dark place, in a hard place, and we're struggling, this is where the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ begins to shine through. Because here's the thing, is that what we expect from God and others is rejection. When we begin to think about all the things that have gone on in our lives and the hard things, the, the decisions that we made that were not good, the mistakes that we made, the thing that we expect is rejection from God and from others. And so we can tend to hide. We can tend to hide from, from other people. And what we want to do is we try to, try to focus on our efforts to perform the right tasks and accomplish the right goals and keep out of the worst kind of trouble, right? Maybe just a little bit of trouble just to kind of make it funny, but we want to stay out of the really bad kind of trouble that would, that would really put us in a place where people don't like us. But here's the thing, that all these things have to do with us. They have to do with, with us and what we can do with ourselves, with our ability but the good news of the gospel has to do with one thing, and that is it has to do with God. The good news that God has given to us a way to be saved from our hopelessness and repeated failures. He has given us a new way to live that will lead us into eternity. He has opened a door and invites us. The ones who can't really pull themselves together all that well, the ones who have success but still are not satisfied, the ones that have the religious work down yet cannot seem to forgive others or worst of all, forgive themselves. The good news meets us in every place because it is only found in one place. It is only found in one person, in Jesus Christ. It is in him that we find the hope of God's love and care for us made real. It is in him that we learn how to follow God, how to have a zeal for him that doesn't turn inward and become a religious 
cancer. It is in him that we have a righteousness that is not our own, and so we put it on. We clothe ourselves in his righteousness, and it covers over our failures, our addictions, and our sin. It is in him that we have mercy, and God has justice. For in him we have a sacrifice, a payment for our sin that we deserved. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is in him that we have new life for Jesus, did not stay dead, but rose again. Meaning that in him we have power over sin and freedom from the chains of our past. It is in him that we have a community, a dysfunctional family of believers, right, that accepts one another because of Christ. Not because we have it all together, but because we together are loved by God. A church that walks with one another, prays for each other, learns together, serves together, and brings just enough weird to make it all fun. <laughs> it is in Jesus that we get to know our Heavenly Father the creator of all things, the one who holds the world and all that we see and know in his hands. For Jesus and the Father are one. So what does this mean for us? What does this all mean for you and me on this Christmas morning? Well, like the who's who, like the who's of Whoville, we love each other. Give gifts to friends and family. Generously serve those in need, the homeless, the widow, the orphan, and all of those things. Because we have received a gift that can never be taken away. And overshadows all things in this world. The gift of Jesus Christ our Lord. God with us. Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor. Everlasting King, the great I am. In him we find all that we need for hope, for love, for forgiveness and healing, and for life everlasting. So wherever you find yourself this morning, this Christmas morning, I want to remind you and encourage you that there's a gift that's been given to us from our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ our Lord, and He's come to bring good news. Good news of peace on earth, good news of reconciliation to God, good news of life everlasting. And so I pray this morning that you would find that good news. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are. God, we thank you for your goodness to us. Father, we lift up all of the pains and hurts and things, God, that tend to get stirred up this time of year. Father, we pray that you would meet us in those places that only you know. Father, you know the ins and outs of our lives. You know the details of our stories better than anyone else. And so, Father, we just ask that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts. God, that you would bring joy to us this Christmas morning because of who you are and because of the hope we have in you. In Jesus' name, amen.